Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. A lot going on in boxing, a lot of opinions about Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, who's at fault. Um, a lot of finger pointing, <clears throat> and the fans are definitely getting involved and voicing their opinions. But the thing is this, I have an opinion too. My opinion is there are key decision makers behind the scenes that precluded this fight from taking place. And I said Crawford and Spence shouldn't be fighting, uh, shouldn't be arguing with each other going back and forth. Um, at the end of the day, I just don't think it's their fault. I think the fighters want the fight. But Lou DiBella chimes in on it because he's a promoter, he's vocal, and he doesn't give a crap about anything. So I was going through Twitter and I came across some stuff, some of these threads and uh, some things he was saying that, you know, he's, he's, he's one of those guys, like I say, fly, Floyd Mayweather is a fly on the wall when it comes to a lot of things. He's in those small circles. Uh, and Lou DiBella is also. And he knows what it takes to make a mega fight. But he says some things that I thought were interesting. And I wanted to share that with you because it's kind of what I felt and I think a lot of people feel or maybe they forgot about and can be misled to thinking that the fight between Spence and Crawford hasn't happened because somebody's ducking, someone's scared, someone being complicated in negotiations. So let's see what DeBella had to say. Let me fix this. Okay, let's see what he had to say. Let me get my cell phone out the way here so you don't, uh, so I'm not blocking stuff. So Luda Bella goes on to say, laughing at all the people who are intent on blaming one party or another. And that we've seen a lot of that going on, the finger pointing, without knowing jack shit. Again, all we know is what we see here on Twitter and these different interviews, but we're not in on those meetings, so we, we really don't have any idea. For yet another meaningful fight not happening in the irrational, self-destructive business of boxing. And outside this niche that we keep making smaller by buying and selling inferior product. Buying and selling inferior product. I mean, I'm not so sure about that. There are some fights that I think probably is inferior. I guess you could say Crawford versus uh, Avancian is definitely an inferior product to Crawford versus Spence. No one gives a shit. Let me clue you in on something, people. No rational person, business entity, or investor does a deal to lose money. Bingo. You hear what this man is saying? Now, the way I take that is Luda Bella, without really spilling the beans or without saying that Crawford and Spence is a fight we'd like to see, but it's just not a fight where there's any real money in it. And that's exactly how I take what he's saying. And the thing about it is, he's not the first one to say that. That's been a common thing ever since these two talked about fighting. A lot of us sat here, I think because we look and see what Eddie Hearn is doing with the heavyweights and in Saudi Arabia. 40 million, 80 million, 120 million. Guys talking about 200 million, 500 million. All kind of craziness. But we know AJ made real money out there with Usyk. Because it's that kind of money in boxing, you almost tend to believe that Crawford and Spence should have at least made 40 million each. 25 million each. But that's not the case. And Luda Bella is addressing that in his, uh, in his rant here. Okay, so when he says investors does not uh, does a deal, they don't do a deal to lose money. Some internet keyboard warriors concept of a fighter's value, and that's true. A lot of us have an opinion on what we think the value of a fighter is because we just figure there should be big money there, but obviously it's not. You know who else told us it wasn't there? The money wasn't there, um, and in particular about Terence Crawford. You know who's been saying that was well, Bob Arum. Now, I think Bob Arum did hurt Terrence Crawford by kind of putting his business out there. But at the end of the day, there's truth to that. Okay? So, he goes on to say, some internet keyboard warriors concept of a fighter's value 
needs to be borne out by buys or subscriptions and have you paid attention to buys and subscriptions and boxing lately? He says, let me clue you in because you can't believe anyone and a bullshit PR narrative is easy to construct. It has been pretty. It hasn't been pretty. If the fight was as big as you folks say, <laughs> because we all have an opinion on that, don't we? Uh, the fight was as big as you all, you all say, likely the fighters themselves believe it. It would have already happened. And he's right. He's right. I just think what, what the fighters are demanding financially, it, it's just not there. And, and I, I really think people are working furiously to to find a way to generate the money they need and get the investors and, and to make it happen. But it's just not there. And you can't fault Crawford for going off now and fighting a Vancean and going to get a guaranteed $10 million. Okay? You can't blame him because he sat here spinning his wheels and probably he's probably getting more than what they probably would have tried to give him over there for fighting Spence because they wouldn't even give him a guarantee, okay? So Ludabella goes on by saying, no, God willing, because it's certainly not getting bigger and more time we wait. Um, they're talking about how, and, and this right here makes a lot of sense, man. We talk about two non-competitive low-value pay-per-views, man. So, and also the more time we wait, all right, that, that, this is something. The more time we wait, the more, and these guys end up going out here fighting other people, there's more of a chance of somebody losing, okay? So there are other people who are chiming in now, taking a look at what Ludabella said. People are saying, hey, they blame Crawford because all the lies came out of their camp. Again, this is those keyboard wars he's talking about. All the stalling came out of their camp. Biggest duck in boxing. He is embarrassed men's boxing. The World Boxing Org should be embarrassed. He didn't even go after Jerron Ennis, Virgil Ortiz, or Keith Thurman. He chose David. Okay, but why in the hell would Terrence Crawford come out here and try to fight Jerron Ennis or Virgil Ortiz? Shit, he needs to knock the roast off, man. He's not going to get in there with those beasts. And even Thurman is high risk. I don't care what anyone says. Thurman's high risk. I think Crawford and Spence beats him, but Thurman is high risk. Thurman's not an easy fight. Thurman's just as risky as Virgil Ortiz and Jerron Ennis. And we just have to be fair to Thurman. But I, I, I still think he loses. Uh, someone else says, how do you know what's true? He's talking about you. How do you know Crawford was stalling just because Spence said so? <laughs> He's right. You don't know jack shit. You're just a Spence cheerleader. Now, the funny thing is, right, this other guy, David Spence right here, right? He goes, boxing isn't a niche, though. Biggest paydays. And let's face it, Deontay, Fury, Berdabiev, Yusik, Merck, all the UFC or whatever you think is shrinking boxing guys in a fight. I think you put bad matchups on TV and that turns people away. You look like bullies. Not sure what the hell David Spence is talking about, but this guy Manny says, you're an angry ball man. And Luda Bella goes, what am I angry about? Genius, not angry at all. And then someone else says, PBC don't put their fighters in ri at risk outside of the lane unless the, they see advantages or weaknesses and oppositions. Then someone else says, you don't make any sense. It's obvious Bud is fighting a weak opponent in David when he could have chosen, Bo again, Jackass is talking here, who all call, call Bud out. He's going for the lesser op. He's supposed to do that. He's supposed to knock the rust off. We know Earl Spence isn't about taking tune-ups, but that's Earl Spence's right. But Crawford's doing the right thing, and he's getting big money for an easy fight. That's what he's supposed to do. It's PBC. If you're too scared, say it, Al. <clears throat> you know, say it's Al. Who's been for a while? Why even say anything? And that's right. Luda Bella didn't want to come out and say anything. So it is what it is, man. Um, everyone has an opinion on it. But the bottom line, okay, when it comes to Spence and Crawford, right, the bottom line, it's got to be money there. And, um... <sighs> You look at Deontay Wilder. Now, I didn't pull it. I should have pulled this up before I did this video. I'm not sure what his guarantee was, but I know he was supposed to make like $40 million for this fight that he just had with Hellenius. But I'm not sure what his guarantee was. I have no idea. Uh, but let's say his guarantee was, I don't know, like $6 million, okay? And then with the pay-per-view sales, 
they expected him to probably make up another, you know, 20, 30 million. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But with Deontay Wilder, my understanding is selling 77,000 pay-per-view buys. You know, that's not a lot. But it still helps to bridge the gap somewhat. So Deontay Wilder probably made a couple more million. Um, but definitely, I don't think he got anywhere close to 40. And I don't think anybody's going to be making that kind of money. For pay-per-view, look, in order for Terrence Crawford with this uh, platform he's fighting on, in order for them to break even, Terrence Crawford has to sell like 250,000 pay-per-view buys at $39, okay? He has to sell 200 and like 30 or 250,000 pay-per-view buys at $39. 250,000. Come on, man. You know, so he's guaranteed the money. Good for him. But that streaming platform, I think that streaming platform is going to take a huge loss. I just, even at the price point of like 40, 40 U.S. dollars. I just don't see Terrence Crawford being able to sell 250,000 pay-per-view buys, man. But I hope he does. But, you know, I just, I just don't see it. But anyway, man, we'll see. More to come, man. Um, but the money's just not there. So, if they get more realistic about their financial demands, I think if they both wanted ten million a piece, twelve million a piece, I think it's there. They're gonna sell. Look, Spence and Crawford are gonna sell pay per view. They're gonna sell. I don't know if they'll hit five hundred thousand, but they're gonna hit probably two fifty. Um. And then I think they can just work, work from there. But I, it makes you wonder, man, is Showtime lose money somewhere? Right? Look, Eddie Hearn, we already know that the Zones lost gazillions of dollars because of Eddie Hearn. Uh, but it makes you wonder, is PBC losing money now? What's going on over there? Because we all know Eddie Hearn was out here struggling. But maybe PBC is struggling too. That's why they don't want to just get behind this fight financially unless there's some serious investors who come in are willing to kind of take on a lot of the risk. Uh, but it seems like nobody wants to do that. Because, you know, it's all about numbers. And with these guys, they want to take a look at numbers. What has a person done? Uh, where's the proof? If you can't show that, you don't have the metrics, right? Then it makes it hard for someone to want to come and put up that kind of money. But Canelo, you know, he sell, he has like 4,000 people showing up for his weigh-in, okay? So, you know Canelo's a draw. But these pay-per-view attractions are built over time, all right? And then you look at something I'll say about Eddie Hearn, although I've lost a lot of respect for Eddie Hearn, with a guy like AJ. You know, AJ turns pro. AJ signs with, with, with Eddie Hearn, right? I'm not saying this happened back-to-back. -back. I'm just saying they were just kind of timetable of things. He turns pro. At some point, he signs with Matchroom. Matchroom gets some uh, sponsorship by Beats by Drake. Under Armour, okay? He's on billboards everywhere. He's in magazines all over the world. People are seeing him everywhere, okay? So he's got the right deal, the right branding deals, and there's a lot of additional money. And plus, he's being built to be a pay-per-view attraction international star. So that's why Anthony Joshua can go anywhere in the world and fight and make huge money because he was marketed the right way. Spence wasn't marketed like that. Uh, Crawford, we all know that that definitely didn't happen with, with Crawford. And you got to blame PBC for that. They have uh, a great approach to be advisors for fighters. They've cracked the code on that. They do, they're doing very well. But as far as building them into international stars, I think they tried that with the little music thing, uh, Broner rapping, Danny Garcia rapping, but that shit ain't really work out. So, but as far as the sponsorships sh ships and stuff, I just don't think they, they, they've been able to, to make that happen the way Eddie Hearn has for, you know, Anthony Joshua. Um, and if they could have done those kind of things, and you look at, there would have been the money and support for Crawford and Spence getting in the ring and fighting. Just like there is for Canelo Alvarez, there was for Pacquiao, uh, Anthony Joshua, you know, and then it has a, a lot to do with just here in the United States. People, man, we'll, we'll, they'll get behind fighters. They like to see you fight, but nobody wants to spend no damn money. 
it's not like that, man. It's just uh, they're not as patriotism and all that, man. It's not as patriotic, man. You know, it's you just don't see that. You don't see people over here waving. The majority of people aren't over here waving American flags and shit like that. You could go to, go to a fight. It'll be a guy from America fighting someone from any other country. No Americans in there. You may have find a concentric few waving flags. Nobody does that shit over here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and if you do that, for the most part, people would probably think you're a racist. So uh, it's kind of kind of a sad situation how, as far as patriotism and stuff when it comes to sports over here and Olympics and everything else, these athletes just don't get the support um, like what you'll see in other countries. You know, and I can tell you, me being uh, having one parent from another country and one parent from here in the United States, and although I was born here, you know, I grew up. Uh, in another country for a while, then I return back to the states. Right? It doesn't matter what your your your, your race is, your religion is. It doesn't matter what your gender is. Anything. In the other country, if if you're from there, you're from there, and they're fanatics about the little island. You know what I'm saying? Fanatics. No matter where you go, they're probably the loudest people, most proud people. All different colors, all different religions, all different genders, economic status, it doesn't matter, okay? Because they all culturally have the same thread running to, through them. Come over here to the United States, not really the same, okay? Everything's fragmented, so much horrible history. Uh, great place, don't get me wrong, but as, as, as far as the people, man, you just don't see that camaraderie and that patriotism like you find going in almost any other country because it's just just such a melting part which are advantages but then at the same time it brings disadvantages and when you look at something like boxing it's where the disadvantages are because a lot of people won't get behind certain fighters although they're American fighters for whatever reason and 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 that sucks it really does so the only time I'll tell you this because if you guys have been on the channel for a while you know that I uh, I was in the military for 25 years right let me tell you and we used to talk about this when I was on active duty, right? We'd be in meetings and uh, we'd be sitting there talking, just chilling, right? And we were talking one day about the camaraderie in the military and how uh, people were asking if they felt that in the United States. Because we were, we were, I was in um, Germany at the time. And they were talking about uh, how do they feel in Germany, about being in Germany. And... Uh, I'm getting off topic, but I'm going to bring it all back together, right? And there were people who were saying they, they, they liked Germany, some didn't. Majority of us loved it. Germany's a beautiful place. And they were talking about do they feel like there's uh, Americans are close. And you get a couple of the, the jackasses in there who want to get a company answer. Oh, I feel that um, everyone in the, in, in the military and in, in America, we all look at each other with a lot of respect. We're all brothers and sisters. And then the other half of the room starts laughing, okay? And then that conversation goes from something that you would think would be productive to ending up on race, okay? Then the shit just totally spiraled out of control. So I'm sitting there quiet, right? Because it got heated because it immediately went to race. And I'm sitting there just watching. And then they came to me and they're like, hey, what's your opinion? And I said, uh, I'll tell you what I said. I said, well, you know, I, I, um, I kind of understand everybody's position in here. Now, I'm being the company man because, you know, I got to watch what I say. But I told him, I said, I'll put it to you like this. I was like, you see, when I go to the airport, I said, I'll walk by someone. I said, I could be in uniform because if you're traveling, you have to wear a certain uniform, right? I said, I may be on business, temporary duty station, going somewhere, traveling, right? I said, if I'm in uniform traveling through the States, I said, more than likely if I walk by someone who's in the same uniform or another uniform, nine times out of ten, they don't say nothing to me. I was like, and um, if I'm out of uniform, I said, people definitely don't talk to me. I said, the only time I felt like uh, people would break their neck to talk to you and grateful when they see another American, I said, is when I'm traveling to another country in an airport and nobody speaks English. 
I was like, that's when you see people starting to panic. And when they see you and they lock eyes on you and they smell a little bit of Yankee, American, USA coming off your ass. I said, that's when they want to be your friend and talk to you. And everybody in the class started laughing. And the instructor was just nodding his head. And uh, he was like, that's a good point. I said, yeah, it's the truth. I said, be honest, man. If, if we're in a country, honestly, and everyone speaks English, why the hell would someone come and talk to me? They just ignore me and walk by. I said, but when your ass is somewhere, I said, and you're uncomfortable talking to people because you don't speak the language or you grew up underneath a rock, you're looking for that person you have something in common with. I said, and the color of skin, the gender or the race, none of that shit matters at that point. I said, what matters is, wow, there's someone here I have something in common with. I said, but when you're outside of those countries, you don't see those commonalities. You, just, you want to come down and start to see all the things that you, that, that you are blind to when you need to help. So I say that to bring it back full circle with this thing with Spence and Crawford. If here in the, in the United States, when it comes to sports, people didn't see, don't, people would see these fighters the way I was seen when traveling through airports in other countries by other Americans as just someone they had something in common with. Opposed to when I'm traveling stateside and they don't, and they choose to see all the other things that make us different. If in boxing they were able to receive fighters as seeing people that they have something in common with and they can get behind and want to talk to them and want to support them, then you can see these guys making the kind of money and getting the, the, the big uh, packed stadiums and all of that. You can see that happening consistently with our top fighters. But um, that's a whole other topic of discussion. But uh, that's the issue, okay? They just... There's just not the support here for these fighters. And to be honest with you, you go to most other countries, you don't need someone from England going on dancing with the stars. You don't need them to come out here and, and be in a movie and do something like that. They're getting behind them regardless. Especially if you're a good fighter, they're behind them. They're spending their money. They're packing out stadiums. Almost any country you go to, they do that. Even if they got to do it outdoors, they're coming. United States, not so much. So... It's definitely some room for growth. But that being said, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Lou DeBella, he's spot on, man. He, you know, he's trying to be you know, the company, man, and watch what he says. But it's, it's the truth, man. It's, the money obviously isn't there. Hopefully they can sort things out. But I don't know, man. We'll see. Shout out to everybody from all seven continents. Y'all keep cool. And as always, I'm in the breeze.